congratulations on the new movie Godzilla vs Kong, but almost as importantly, congratulations on getting your driver's license. These are two momentous events in one's yes. life. Very much, very much. Was that a big deal for you to get the license? Was that something that like was on the the calendar? Like as soon as I'm able, I'm getting this. Setting personal goals for myself is definitely one of my priorities. I said I want to graduate high school a year early, and I definitely want to get my driver's license as soon as possible. For me, those are my two of my biggest things. I'm still working on the first one, but the second one is done and dusted. Do you listen to driver's license while driving? Is it a meta moment of listening to the song oh. while you drive? What an amazing breakup song, by the way. Godzilla versus Kong. This is your second go round in the monster universe. I mean, it's kind of annoying. You have your two mega stars refusing to do publicity. It's all on your shoulders, Millie. It's all on my shoulders. And that's why I need a massage, you know, because I'm just <laughs> carrying the weight of these two monsters, literally. I would expect you never get used to this kind of scale of filmmaking, but you know, sort of the tricks of the trade by now. What was the biggest difference on this go round versus the last one? Well, I'm older um, and, you know, the first time around we filmed in Atlanta, Georgia. Um, and the second time around we filmed two months in Hawaii, three months in Australia. So it was huge, you know, a big uh, move for me and my family, you know, just to kind of uproot and go to Hawaii and then go to Australia. And you might think, oh, you lucky girl, you're in o Hawaii and Australia. But actually it's quite difficult. The time difference, you feel very isolated. You know, you can't talk to anyone. And also I found myself working every day. So you don't really, you're not, you're not really enjoying Hawaii like you really want to enjoy Hawaii. Right. But uh, I wish I could, but I'm definitely going to go back so I can be able to actually enjoy it and, and embrace the culture. When you signed up for the last Godzilla film, I assume this was sketched out a bit. You knew sort of the arc, generally speaking, or did they, they tell you nothing and just say, hopefully we're gonna be able to shoot this next one in a year? Like, how much do you know going in? I think I knew that I was gonna be in the second one. I knew that. I didn't know when. I mean, that's always kind of, I don't even know when I'm doing Stranger Things, like seasons, likewise. Like, they'll let you know maybe a few months before, like, right. these big dates. So, that is always up in the air. And for this film, I found out that we were doing Australia like a few months before. Like that was very much news to my ears. But I didn't know like the script or the arc of the character very much like when signing on to it. Does it feel like, I mean, it's in the title. We have to make the choice going in. Does it say something about one's personality where they side? Like if you're a Godzilla head or a, a Kong person, what does that say about the human being? Someone that, that is very much an emotional person that, you know, likes to communicate um, and stuff like that, then probably go with Kong. If right. there's someone that's like, fight, 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 go with Zilla. So it's like, I go with Zilla because I'm like, we're talking about a fight here, you know? Yeah. But I would choose Kong if I wanted a shoulder to cry on. Does Zilla remind you at all of David Harbour? They're both loud, they're both tall, they're both strong-willed. Yes, but uh, I'm not afraid of either of them, you know? <laughs> you, got, you, got, you got to stand up to them, show them who's boss, yeah. They know who's boss. <laughs> we said that a long time ago. <laughs> So let's weigh in on some of the other big pop culture matchups. If you had to pick Marvel versus DC, who do you, who do you side so with? I haven't watched a Marvel film ever. I have never watched a DC film. Whoa. Yeah, news, I know. What's going on? Is it just not your bag? It's not your thing it, or? It's, it's it's not, but I'm open to it. You know, it's not like I'm, I just, I've just never been like, oh, I'm gonna put on this film. Like right. I'm more into like the notebook. Yeah, no, I hear you. You know, let's put on some romance films. I'm not, I'm not crazy on that because I think I'm in it. That's why I think I am like, you know, I'm doing that stuff already. I want to see stuff that's real. So speaking of romance, okay, this is a provocative one. Bridgerton, Mandalorian. I, I, I think I can guess. Yes, Bridgerton. I mean, what's the <laughs> I mean, the music and the costumes, it's amazing. Harry Potter, Jurassic Park? Jurassic Park. Interesting. I've never watched Harry Potter. Millie, you need a break because you need to catch up because... I know, I know, I know. I have so <laughs> many friends um, that just look at me and they're like, how? I'm like, I don't know. <laughs> what about uh, The Office versus Friends? Friends, I've never watched The Office. I've watched every episode of The Friends. And oh, um, the friend. I was going <laughs> to... Was that, on, was, okay. that a, was that in the last year or had you were you already so like I, I like grew up like eating dinner and watching Friends. Like, you know, like in Matilda when they eat dinner in front of the TV? Mm -hmm. That was me and my family with friends. Have you met 
said cast members? Would that blow your mind to mingle with the Jennifer Anistons I've, of the world? I've met Jennifer Aniston, who is amazing. I met her at an after party once and she was so sweet, so kind. We had a conversation. I just like kind of like stood set in her eyes and it's like, hi. <laughs> friends forever they're they're reuniting soon so maybe you can moderate or something you can if do i met ross yeah i would scream pivot <laughs> <laughs> i like how you leaned in you're like this is this is the important thing you know this, that. this is between us if i meet him <laughs> <laughs> so speaking of people you admire, I'm curious because, you know, I feel like every time I'm catching you in these last few years, these are pivotal kind of transitional points in your career. Obviously, right. Stranger Things establishes you on this ginormous scale. Did you look at like when you signed on for Godzilla and you got Enola Holmes going, did you look at other people like Daniel Radcliffe, Emma Watson, Kristen Stewart, people associated with big franchises as models for like how I can not be identified with one thing as much as I love it. Right, yeah, I mean, listen, I used to get nervous, like I'm doing Stranger Things and I'm doing it for such a long time. I wanted to do stuff that, I mean, I haven't not done a franchise yet. I've never just played a character and then that's it. Like we don't revisit her again, so. Which is I'm unusual, it's that. usually the reverse. It's usually it the people usually look, the look, looking for their franchise. You've got right. like three going. <laughs> <laughs> I know, <laughs> I know. <laughs> So does that feel like a wait? Like you're like, it'd be nice to just kind of like do a character for, for three or four months and then, you know. Right, I mean, listen, I signed up for a few more things, which is exciting because I know that they will just be a one-time thing. So yeah. I'm ready for that. But I enjoy doing franchises because I like doing a character, having a year off, revisiting the character. You know, I like that, that's fun for me. And I think that it shows growth within the character and you can make the character even better than the last time. What about your attitude in terms of like when you got cast as 11, I think you were, you auditioned maybe when you were about 11. You're ten. seven, 10, okay. So you're 17 now. That's a much different time in someone's life. Yeah. Are there kinds of things in characters that you're kind of like, feel like I've done that. Like I'm I, I'm ready to kind of transition from like girl to young woman, to young adult. And, right, and yeah. You know what I, I found is kind of interesting is like, I'm a young girl and you know, I'm only 17, but at the end of the day, I'm learning to be a woman. I'm learning to be a young woman. And so being a young girl, people watch you grow up, right? And they almost become invested in your growth and your journey, but they aren't ready to accept the fact that you're growing up, right? right. So I wear a crop top and people are like, <gasps> she's 10 i'm like no i mean i am 17 I, I, that's yeah. something that girls do or like i wear high heels or i wear you know an outfit to an award show and they're like oh, she looks 50. no it's because you've watched me since i was 10. you know right. that's why you think that and so i think that's what i found has been quite difficult the transitioning period it's like they're not accepting it i'm i've completely accepted it you know i'm i'm, You're like, I'm good <laughs> It's been a while. Let me like let me wear a high heel. <laughs> I'm not going to be playing those young girls anymore. And it's like, kind of like, I have 50 million people, like my parents, and they're like, no, my my parents are like, yay, thank God, you're 17. Like, <laughs> like put on a pair of high heels. Let's go. You know? No, but you're right, and and I'm sure it will be a shock to the system when you start to do even more kind of adult roles. It's inevitable. The kind of stuff that you would want to do, you want to reflect your own experiences. You don't right. want to live in the past. And no, yeah. I don't want anything to hold me back, which I think is the right. most important thing. I want to evolve. Um, and I don't want this industry to hold me back from evolving and, and telling stories that I feel like have to go with my age, you know? The fame part is intimidating for anybody, any human being on the planet, let alone right. someone that's gone through these pivotal years for you. These are the years where you're supposed to be able to like screw up in private and not have right. to worry about doing it in front of everybody. Have right. you found there have been kind of coping mechanisms you've learned along the way of like how you can kind of preserve your sanity and preserve your privacy to a degree that will not drive you insane, to, that will help you? Unfortunately, when I was younger, I was much more carefree and didn't really even think about the fame side of anything. Right. Um, I was very much kind of enjoying it. You were enjoying it. it. You were a kid. Yeah. I, mean, I mean, right. And I'm just like, whoa, <laughs> fancy dresses. Like, that sounds fun, you know? Yeah. Whereas now, I'm as much as I'm very grateful for it, I've struggled with anxiety for a while. I've definitely struggled with the fame aspect more nowadays, just because 
like you said, you want to screw up, but there's no screwing up. You can't really put on a mask, you know, because people yeah. do see right through it. And so I've done things in the past where I post videos of me upset because it's like, this is who I am and I'm not going to hide it from you because I am a normal girl and I'm figuring everything out myself. So for me, that's kind of my journey. I've, I've struggled with anxiety and I'm, I'm learning to cope with it. I, I meditate, I journal a lot. I take a lot of time for myself. And when I come home from work, I allot like an hour to do something of mine that I really want to do. Like I paint my wall and I decorate my walls. <laughs> like it's a kind of a strange thing, but I love, I love doing anything like therapeutic like that. I love spending time with my family. But I think doing allotting time for yourself is what I've learned is, is the most important because you'll find yourself within those moments. Was that part of the reason that you recently, I believe you left TikTok recently, right? Was that right. Yeah, you know, I, I, I really focus on positive environments and I think yeah. that you are a product of your environment. So when you're surrounding yourself with good people, you are going to be a good person. You learn from people, you learn from wise people. I've been lucky enough to share moments with people that are very amazing, like my parents and also people in this industry. And when I was on a social media platform that was generating a lot of hate and uh, shade, yeah. I just felt like I didn't want to be part of something that was enjoying that and kind of embracing that. So I had to leave because I felt like it wasn't right of me to advocate for cyberbullying and then be part of something that, I hear that, you. that enjoys that. We were glad to see that you at least popped up in Noah's TikTok recently so that the love is, is still strong there. Well, clearly. I mean, listen, I, I love the dances, but I just, I don't like the app itself. <laughs> I get it. So it's the best of all possible worlds. So, so, <laughs> so Noah came over, he had a COVID test, came over and was like, let me like, let's do a TikTok. So I was like, okay, we're going to do it together. And so it was really nice to be able to, to do that. And I, I know that a lot of everyone, everyone was excited to see me back, but I'm not, I'm not back from, from my account, but I'll definitely okay. be peering through. What's the pop culture bond at this point with Noah, having known him a, a, a few years? Like, what do you guys bond over now versus when you first met? What's the, what are the conversations well, when about? When we first met, you know, we were very much young and, and we were so into like sleepovers and scary movies and like making movies on our iPads. Like that was what we were doing. And now it's more like, hey, you know, <laughs> cool you know <laughs> we're like cool kids now Ugh. but um he's so amazing i love talking to him and catching up and it's so funny he came over to my house and the first thing we did was i said let me show you my car and we go outside we sit in my car for like an hour and we just catch up and we're in the pitch black i mean the, the car was pitch black and we were sitting in there i had my flashlight on and we just talked about everything and caught up and it was so nice to be able to to talk to someone that knows my position because they're in the same yeah, you've gone through this journey with this cast. I mean, is the environment on set different now in season four? Obviously, you guys, again, you're at different places in your lives. Maybe the finish line starts to get in sight. Like, you know, this is a finite thing. So do you start to get a little bit kind of like, oh, we have to enjoy this. Like, we, this, this might just be another year or two. Who Like, who knows? Right. Yeah, I mean, listen, Stranger Things is, I get emotional even talking about the end because the end to me, I. I I don't want to think about it. You know, this is like my home. It's like when I go and do a movie, it's like, all right, like I'm going to go home to Stranger Things. This is where I belong. And so being on set recently, it's been like since, since I was like in season one, it's kind of like the same people and the same vibe, you know, listen, it's very different. We, we have much more of a, a free range to do what, what we like. They trust you more and you're older. They trust yeah. us yeah. and yeah, yeah, and it's like, it's more of a success and we have yeah. more of a weight on our shoulders. But I will say like, I love the show and I, I love going to set and having my character grow more. It's very much the same as season one. What is the last piece of TV or film that you really obsessed over? Last night I watched a very good film called Closer with Natalie yeah. Portman. I've never watched that. My mom was like, you should watch that. And I watched it in the red hair. I'm like, ready to do yeah. it. Yeah. She, yeah. she's she's pretty good she's not bad that one she's not bad that one she's not like my <laughs> full-time inspiration not at all <laughs> is she really is that the one you put on the pedestal yes for sure yeah what was the first role you haven't seen star wars so i know it wasn't that if she finds that out about this she might not want this friendship no i met her once and almost like welled up she goes i heard people think that we look alike and i'm just so lucky and i was like <laughs> Let me just sit here quietly for the rest of the interview. I was like, you're lucky. I was like, 
Nat. Because I feel like I can push that now. Nat, let me introduce you to Zilla. Zilla Nat. Nat. <laughs> <laughs> I was like, uh, Nat. <laughs> You're stunning and I will never be half as good as you ever. So that's it. And so, and then I started singing Brown Eyed Girl to her. <laughs> as one does. So you mentioned before, you know, Enola Holmes, which I assume hopefully you want to return to that character. I mean, our I plans would love afoot. To. Yeah, I mean, I would love to. I, I, I'm begging for it to happen. And you've, you've got like a bunch of things like in the hopper as a producer. You're potentially, I think, going to be directed by the Russo brothers. Like that's kind of ginormous. Is there, yeah. I mean, I mean, I'm sure you're passionate about all of these potential future projects, but is there one that you're like really psyched to get going on, to get your feet on set? Yes, absolutely. I have one specific project that I'm just, I'm crazy over. I'm like continuing to read the treatment and the scripts for it because of how excited I am. I've been wanting to do this role for like a few years. Um, and so- What is it? What is it? What? You can't just tee it up like that. I know, I know, I know. But I've been wanting to do this role for a few years, and so now it's finally come to fruition, and I'm very, very excited to be able to film it. Can you say just aspect-wise of like what's exciting about it without revealing what it is? Um, what's exciting about it is that it's uh, a period piece um, okay. in a foreign country. Okay. That, that's part. That's part of the, the joy too. You're talking about Australia. You're you're checking off all these boxes. You're traveling. Well, to hopefully. I I'm actually playing a safari. I'm a safari. I'm in the safari. That's my character. I'm like, he's a lizard. I'm going to be Robert Irwin's uh, wife. I play his wife. Oh, there's the, the exclusive. The I was not the, expecting that. Watch that be the headline. Honestly, <laughs> after all I've said, that's going to be Robert Irwin's wife. No, not at all. But I'm saying, <laughs> I'm trying to play with you. Never mind. No, we know you have the driver's license now, so I know the next part is in a Fast and Furious movie. That's that's the no-brainer. That's that's, that's, that's why you got the license. That's exactly why. I've all, that's been my uh, dream 